steep shorelines is the next such a situation that we're going to run into. These can be in natural lakes in some areas where the glacier pushed up. You'll see where the, the glacier pushed in and d started digging in. Let's take Wisconsin and Minnesota and, uh, and Michigan where the, where the great glaciers were coming down and on one side of the lake you see a great big high hill. That's where the, the glacier uh, was cutting down and it come down through uh, from the north, northeast or the northwest and it started moving down into those states and it started digging down. And as it started digging down, it started forcing up the, the hill. So you got a steep shore. Now in, in reservoirs, you, you, all you got to do is where they're built, you're going to always find some of these. But in natural lakes, what I do when I go to, to say, Minnesota or Wisconsin or, or those areas where they have these natural lakes, especially Wisconsin up in that particular region of the country, uh, I always look and see a natural lake. I look, go to the lake, and I either drive around it or get to where I can see most of it. And on one side, I see the tall hill. Now that meant, if you look over on the other side, I just uh, turn around 180 degrees, and you see where the, the land is rather flat. So that means on the, on the flat side, you're going to have long bars, which we were just talking about, and the short bars. And you can have some feet of stream cuts. Whereas on this side of the lake where you have this high hill, then you're going to have a steep shore and you're going to have certain features there where this, where this uh, glacier just pushed it up in the hill. So as soon as you look at that natural lake and you look around, see the hills. And so you immediately know where the steeper stuff is and where your long, shallow, and flat stuff is by just looking at the terrain. You can talk about anything here that you want to say. That the thing that do is uh, what the fish can see as they move, move. And so, a lot of times this is an, ex is an extreme in this case. But what I'm talking about, this, this gives them plenty of stuff that the, on those ledges and things that give them migration right, right on up. This is one that has some rocks. Now, your question would be, is there enough stuff on this steep bank that then on this point here for that fish to use it? So you got all those rocks, so here's a stump and so on, so that would be a pretty good spot. It must be some more stuff here because this, or this little reef right here and the stump must be more here, must be a point, and it could be that this is just comes to a point and that the erosion uh, uh, here has formed a bar down underneath here. So then you, up the steep bank, you have all this timber stuff that they could use it. This is another, it's kind of an extreme of a steep shore, but this is trolling water until you find something. This is, uh, you just keep going in a lot of places. You just see maybe a mile of this stuff, but you, uh, you always check it out in, in the colder part of the season and you just see trolling water until you find anything where a big slide or a wash or something has caved in and has formed a bar that goes down into the sanctuary depth. But you have to consider that this is a steep shore and in the colder weather, I'm going to have to fish these things. I, normally you would just troll them to see where it is. Check your depth and depth and speed control. Now, in looking at this thing, you would say, well, I don't know about this. This is a lot of w water here, but that would look like there's nothing. I know right here there's nothing here that would show, although it's a steep bank, so this is trolling water. But maybe you better check this because it looked like it's a rock surface flowed and a lot of erosion has occurred right here, and you'd have to check this little bar and this one, but, but you'd check it with, with a trolling. And if it, if it uh, is a first pass, you still had something, you made another pass and come back and still had something, then you meant that, that that thing came on down there a pretty good bar. But if, let's say that the water level is right here. 
Let's say the water level's right here, and we've got about 50 feet maybe, 25 feet to here. Uh, I don't see too much. There's a little wash coming here, but I wouldn't spend too much time here because it looked like uh, that uh, if I was up here, I went across there, I wouldn't see anything anyway. But when I look at this thing down here, I'd walk it down, but to me, that's trolling water. I'd start out maybe checking this steep shore. Here's right here it is. I'd start seating with maybe a 500 and run a little place. Then I put it on a 400, and then I'd go 250 and go on up here. The time I got down that and I didn't see anything, man, I'd pass them up. I'd just look, forget them. It's all trolling water. Now, I hope you got that, what I just said. And, 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 and a little later, I'm going to send you to, I'm, and, uh, I'm going to uh, refer back to what I put in the la this last newsletter. And in this last newsletter, what I talked about what I had at the Jamboree last year and don't get lost. And in this newsletter, I showed you where I made these trolling passes with a one, one and then another one and then another one. I didn't see anything. Then I just kept going. And so you can, in this case here, if you wish to, you can refer back to what I said about uh, 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 your don't get lost and your observation above the water where I would use different size lures to troll it. It was the buck says in the, in the May, June issue. So you might want to refer to it, but keeping this in mind, you can see why it would work. This is another steep shore. Doesn't look very good to me. And if I had high water, I think I would troll up here and I wouldn't, I wasn't ain't about to see anything. So I would go, but there's a little wash right here. But that's getting down there pretty deep. And probably the fish make contact here as they're coming along here. And I, you, if the water was that low, you'd make a couple passes here. But if the water was up here pretty soon, you'd find out that there was nothing there. That's not, just not enough. It's not crowned or nothing. But if you hit this particular reservoir at this low water state, you better work that because if you look close, you can see there's a lot of debris and a lot of mud has come down here. So you have to you have to check this thing out. Where the wash and the slide produce the bar at, that you can see at this particular water level. This is humps. There's a lot of material on here, as you see, but I'll send you material that, you, that will give you a little, a little better breakdown. You can look at this thing right here, but I'll send you some material about the humps and what you have to say about the humps. And uh, so this is self-explanatory. You can study it if you wish. Uh, that's the way I put it. Uh, what I talk about, I got a deep water sanctuary depth uh, way downstairs. Then I got another hump that's up, up here, and then I got one in the shallows. Uh, th and it's self-explanatory in the material that I send to you that you can use for reference in talking about these things. I'll show it to you in just a minute. Humps, humps, humps. It's a definite structural situation. I can see two or three places, probably a saddle right there. Yeah, this bar may go right on out there and make contact. Here's a little wash that's coming down through here, and I'm, I'd check a bar here. But if I came trolling around here, I would see this little ditch, I'd see this little ditch, and I'd look out here and I'd see that all. Right, but if it wasn't short uh, by the wave action or something, then I'd look up here and there's an island, so I better check down here. When you see uh, an island above the water, you better figure there's some humps down on the water. You won't go far wrong unless you guide in finding humps. There's other ways in finding them too if you keep your eyeballs open. Just the low water states, you'll see one out there. Sometimes in a lot of places you see a weeds 
or some brush in the water. We'll show you that it's a home. You can see this island here. So when you see this island here, uh, you better figure, you better go and look around and keep your eyeballs open and see if there isn't another indication of a hump, an underwater island, so to speak. Now, a lot of times I've found them in, uh, when in big water, such as you see here, I see the w w waves breaking over this thing. This could be uh, a hump, or in a case of a, a, a big, wide plain, flood plain type a reservoir, this could be uh, a, a delta situation. But you see this and you've got to go and check it for a delta situation or for a hump or a reef. You've got to look at them. Now this delta situation is, uh, is usually in wide flood or flatland reservoirs. But in some lowland type reservoirs, you will have a, uh, this delta situation at the upper end of the reservoir. And so you have to uh, explain this to talk to them, and, and I'll send you material on this too, but you have a flat here and a flat here, and you've got a little ridge that runs down along the channel. This is in wide flood plain type reservoirs, usually all the way, and also in flatlanders. That is where there's, there's just a great big, wide, big flatland reservoir where to cut the timber out. And you still have some delta situations out here. This may be full of timber, but you still got it. And you have literature telling, and you, you can explain the reason uh, how the fish move in these things and the side feet of thin cuts that cut through here. Because we've already talked about the delta fit situation, uh, how important the side feet of stream cuts are. There again is uh, uh, by, by seeing the, the, uh, the wind and showing you where there's a feature out there underneath the water. Sometimes you, you, you're looking for a delta situation and you know that this particular wide flood plain or this flatlander has some delta situation, so you, 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 you got to go check these when you see this water breaking out here. And this uh, is, uh, shows you at a low water stage, and you, you, although you had side feed stream cut in this channel where the channel came down through here, and the main channel was coming over here, and here's the main, and here's the top of a, uh, of a high delta situation up there. The current coming down through here. So you can see this is a nice situation. Uh, you'd be working this particular shoreline, shore, and you'd find that rascal, and you work here. But since you're in a wide flood plain, and you knew that it don't situate, you better start out here and go here and see if it cut right through the delta. And if it did, there's your hot spot. Here's your deep water. So here's your side feed stream cut. It cut right through that rascal. Probably what happened. Came right down through here and it started turning down the river and it cut right through there and went right on here. These are things that you have to keep your eyeballs open you know, on, on this thing. You can see that these, in this discussion, that it, you don't know how many structure situations you're going to have and your depth center won't show it and, and your, your uh, contour map, topo, won't show it because you won't be able to read them. And, and, but when you look at terrain and you know what a type of, a, a type of reservoir it is, and you know we take up type of reservoirs, island, lowland, and flatlanders, and then we know about what the features are in each one of these rascals. And so this is a delta situation, and most likely this feed of stream cut come out right through here and cut, and cut right through there. Bang, 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 bang at high water. But you can see the lake is telling you what's here. Now, I put this slide in so that you can uh, be sure that you understand what the delta situation is. Here's the here's here's channel. You drop off right here. It's a, a break line to here. 
Then the delta hunts and the flats over here at this side and the main channel here and the bottom brake lines right here and the drop offs up here. The bottom brake line here and the bottom brake lines right there. Dams. Dams are very important. Uh, uh, and with some of them, you, you, you wouldn't be messing with them very much, but in most of your, uh, from um, most of your big uh, flatland reservoirs, your lowland type reservoirs, your river types uh, where you dam across the river for navigation and so on, uh, the, the dams are very important. Uh, yeah, but what I like to look at, uh, is uh, uh, when I see one like this now, I don't mess around too much with that one. I'm gonna go up here. I'm gonna drive around this thing. I see a road, I just keep going. I'd go up to where I could put good fishing. What you and I are interested in, as far as dams are concerned, is uh, a little bit different from that. And you'll find all types of these things. This can be, uh, it can be in flatlanders, of course, with a long dam. You could be in tidal rivers. You could be in, uh, uh, in uh, natural lakes or in just a great big old river. In this case, the dam and the riprap is very important. That riprap is on that dam, it has to be fished. It, you have to, it's a trolling situation until proven otherwise. And it, you, this is a structure situation that you have to work out. Now in, in this thing, I always keep saying that guys do not look to the backside of the dam. You gotta drive across it. It's very important that you do this so it's your uh, top water, your observation along the, the, the above water is got to show you what's down below. Well, lots of times on against a dam such as this, you, it doesn't show you much. You just troll it and might happen to find something. But one of the keys to knowing what's on the front side is to know what's on the back side. So I'm not going along the back side of that dam. And I'm gonna see what's there. Well, as I went on along the out, that back side of that dam, I looked at all terrain. And just a little bit later, I'll show you another, uh, uh, just following this just in a minute, uh, what happened. So you're gonna see all kinds of streams. This is a tail race, which I know why, uh, uh, flood plain type, I mean a flood type reservoir. This is the tail race. You're gonna, as you went down along the back side of that dam, you're gonna keep, you're going to look at everything. Tail race is very important. You know, you'll see the, the, the people fishing on these tail races going down through here. And at certain times of year, this day is good. And when the wind is bad and you can't get on the front side of that lake, you can always get fish this as tail race. You'll be right out of the wind. Some of them are very big, and some of a lot of the food plugs, uh, like in uh, down in Florence, Alabama, but how some of these big dams and all, the tail races become very important due to the wind, and you and you have to be that the tail race is actually a fishing situation. It's a fishing situation. I didn't say a structure situation. I said a fishing situation. Now, in that, as far as the dam is concerned, and in our work and going down the back side of the road, down on the back side of that dam, he said a dam cut off channel. And this is what you're going to find if you look and see where the, the, the old dam went down through here, the old channel went down through here. This is going to show you where a hot spot is on this side. They moved it and they put the tail race over here instead of putting the tail race here. <coughs> uh, 
I'll show you an, a little different one in just a minute, but there. Now this is submerged road bed. Uh, you can you can talk all you want to on the on this backside or on the front side of these dams, but uh, this shows you hitting the, when you're trolling the riprap. Anything is unusual there. Now let me go back to that just a minute. When you're trolling this thing, you're going to probably see where to cut it off. But sometimes you don't see it. You're in here working against the dam trolling and everything and different things, and you don't see this hidden thing. So you go down to where the, the discharge is, and there's water around there, and you can't get right to it anyway because most of the time they have a barrel line around it. But you work down to the barrel line, and then you go out, and you didn't see the old, old channel. You know where they moved it, but when you went down to the back side of it, then you could, you saw it a lot of times here. You will find that when they built the dam, you will find that, that they had ramps that came up to carry the dirt. They got the dirt out here. They got all this dirt, and they, 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 the roadbed would go up out here and here. And as they took this dirt out here, you get all kinds of brake lines. You get humps and everything else and sharp brake lines out in here where they remove the dirt to build it down. And trolling this, you'll soon find out where the shallow water is, where the cut is, where all these features are out here because you're going to use different sized lures and different depths to go in here. That dialogue I just told you, it can come before if you want to, before you go to the backside down. But you have to go down to the backside. And a lot of times they don't have a road. You have to drive here. A lot of times they do have a road down there, but a lot of times you just have to go along here and look down through here, look down through here, look down through here. Now what I used to do, where this road didn't go down the back side of the dam, I'd come across the dam. I'd come across the dam, and I'd see where this where the feed, feeder stream cut, well, the old channel came down across here. Well, I didn't, couldn't see it on the other side of the dam. So I, what I would do, I'd, I'd go along the dam until I looked down here and I saw the old, where they, they cut off the old stream, the old stream bed down here. And what I'd do, they had, they had posts and things along the dam up here, so I'd get down here and get me one of these great big rocks and I'd put it on a post over on the dam side. When I came along and I saw my rock sitting up there on that post up here, that down here was my channel. You see, you, these are all the little keys that the fellow has to keep his eyeballs open if he wants to be successful fishing. And as I keep telling him, you'll never get any and you can never reach the point where you can get any better in the interpretation. And the above water observation is one of the greatest things in teaching you what you're going to find. And I'm going to, I'm going to beat on this thing, and I'll probably be beating on this thing again at the next jamboree. Hot spot. There's a hot spot. If, 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 if they had a ramp or something that came up here, and they had a little bar or something down on the way of the water here. Due to the excavations, they had some brake lines out here. You will find them, and there's going to be another hot spot. You can go along that dam and, and do it along, and it say, let's say it's about a mile long, or half a mile long, but a mile long. You're going to find the hot spots along there. Now, the hot spots were determined by what they covered up here or what they made. Here would be a hot spot. If they had a ramp coming up here, that would be a hot spot. If they if they went in here and they, and they had a hump right in here and a little little hickey right here where they didn't take all the dirt away and build in the dam, then it'd be another hot spot. You will find them. One of my favorite ones is here's the here and about a mile up here, I hit a little thing out here. There's a hot spot. I come right up here 
and right here is a brake line. It comes right across here. It's a flat, this is flat, and it's a brake line that comes right across here, and boy, right there in the corner of that rascal is unbelievable. Submerged roadbed. This is a, uh, this is a uh, uh, very important one that most all reservoirs, somewhere in there, is going to be some sunken road beds that cross a, a big cove, or across the main lake, or across a great big flat, and went a long ways. For, uh, uh, before it came to this thing right here. But you could see that road bed over here. You can look on a contour map and uh, uh, the uh, topo map and they'll show most of them the old road beds went across the lake by a dotted line, bum, 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 like this. So you'll want to check those on when you're marking areas on the map that you got to check out. But when you're rolling down through here and trolling here, you look up here and you see an old, even an old dirt road bed may be full of brush or maybe a hard surface road. And then in here, but you saw that thing and then you look across the lake and you probably see another oh, across the cove or across the lake and you see it going up across the hill. You better check that rascal. That is a good one because this side and that side goes all the way, goes all the way. Here is the home of the fish, right there. If you're on a lake, and this is 300 feet deep, or the channel is 300 feet deep, you always figure in your interpretation on a contour map or you get out there and look at it, that this is where the fish originate. They may not be down there very often, but by cracking it goes all the way, and you better figure that someday they might be here. So here is route. So you've got to check it. it uh, so the deeper the better, as far as I'm concerned. Sometimes I'll come out here and I'll go up this road bed to say I, I hit it at 25 feet. It's 25 feet in here, and I get out here. And I, I look at it, and it's 100 feet. And I can't, I'm going to run a 700 on it with mono. And, and so I, I want to get down around 20, 23 feet. So I come up here, and I just walk up that road and get it. Now, if I go to wire, then I'll sink it and let it get down in here. And then I'll, I'll work that brake line. But if it's got brush and stuff on it, I'm going to get in the middle of that road and with wire. Here, I, So I start at 60 feet, and I walk right on up that rascal. That's a nice road bed. That rascal was built many, many years ago, before the uh, there was uh, before there was any uh, asphalt going there. But it's a there's an old road bed, and if you come up uh, up toward us there, you see where it went off, and there may have been right up above here. There was a hard surface road out here, and in fact, it, this particular situation it was. But this old dirt road with the shoulder here built up, the shoulder here built up, went right down through here. And there's a dam sitting way over here, and there's a nice saddle right there. But that road path went right on down to that channel. And I can't, I can't beat that with a stick. Now this is a hard thing right here for me to get, and, and I the way the high water was, I couldn't even find a, uh, what I would call a good fence row, but you know what I meant. It could be a hedge row, but they had a fence going down through there before the reservoir or the, was built or before the lake was built or, or they had a natural lake and it, and it had the, the, the hedge row, it went right down to the water, so you'd better check to see if it went on underneath, especially this is in the reservoirs. You'll see these hedgerows up here coming out, and then you'll obviously see a little uh, uh, fence right here, or you could find a, just a, a, a little hedgerow, 
a little bushes or a little tree line going right down through here that grew up around that fence or that hedgerow. It's a little difficult to find uh, right, right at this particular time. But that's, it's, uh, I did, Jerry and I did find that one uh, uh, a little water, a little water. But uh, this is a hedgerow, and it went right on down through yonder. It seemed like it was a channel out here. It seemed like a two of them. But it was something showing us where deep water was, and, and it could go right up onto the to a land. And if you've been around reservoirs as long as I have, you better keep your eyeballs open to an old hedgerow or old fence row that the grass and the bushes have grown up and come right down to the edge of the water because that fence, before the reservoir was filled, went right on downstairs. Probably went down to the creek, or to the channel. Causeways are very, this is a very important feature. Now the reason it's important is, in fact, one of my key things is, is most of the time it'll have good trolling water, but it will be clean. Your lake was probably, your reservoir was probably in a reservoir where it was full of trees, bushes. When it, this, this causeway is going to be clean. Even where they built one across a natural lake, and you might have a weed situation all over that natural lake, go very deep. But you're going to have some clean water, workable water, here. Now, the, the other feature about the causeway is this, that it will separate two bodies of water, so to speak. It'll be a bunch of water on one side of the causeway and a bunch of water on the other side of the way. When you go to the lake to check water color reservoir, you know about the riprap because we just talked about it. But when you go to a reservoir and you look on your road map and you see a road crossing the lake, you better go straight there and see what the situation is. You can see whether it's clean. You know we can fish it. We know that the rip rap and the way it is that some you've got a channel here, you got deep sanctuary depth here, the contact point is here, the contact point here, and the contact point migration right here. It could be around on the other side the same way. You gotta check that out. Very important. One of the features of this situation in reservoirs is as you drive around and cross that causeway and look, you watch the water color, because as you go around the lake, the number one feature that you're looking for is water color. And don't let anybody kid you. And if you see a roadbed that crosses the reservoir, you go and see if it's, it's a water color change between this side and that side, many times there'll be a difference in watercolor. Some of the best watercolor I've found over the country work this side of this thing, clear water, no fish. Go right around on the other side, nice color, and over there was the fish. This is uh, not a causeway. You could, you, 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 you're looking at it and seeing the bridge. Here's a bridge that crosses the lake. A lot of big lakes, they, they're on piers rather than on, uh, on uh, uh, just a, a causeway where they build it up with drip wrap and go across. This, I don't spend too much time here, except in the cold winter time, I might, if this is very deep, I get in, you might jig it or something. But most of the time, I, I, I just troll it. And the weather and the water conditions tell me whether I want to spend any time around those piers. And most likely, if I did, I'd check, I'd just throw it in a couple of depths and troll down deep. Or I'd, I'd go this way mostly so I'd go right across there so I'd catch them all in one pass. And, and then I'd catch the other side, and then I'd check deep and over here. But in the winter time, if I wasn't quite satisfied, I'd go and park my boat right here and I'd jig to the base of that rascal. It's going to have, this is what you're looking for.
this this is uh, actually a call this uh, this particular scene you see here is a South Dakota scene that Jerry and I shot and if this curve went on around here and here was a power plant in here and this was with a causeway that went across up to it to it to it there was water over on the other side of this thing too Pierre was down here and uh, the water on this side and water over on the other side there's a I think that up here was a cut that went through could have been could have been back down here but that is fishing water trolling water causeway now on the causeway you also have another uh, situation such as along a flatland dam big wide fat flatland a dam with a long causeway a long riprap and that is sometimes you're going to have a switch and this is usually they'll put this bridge not so much in the center but maybe way over to one side for the water to come over here I reckon due to the fact that they didn't want to carry all this material building that their bridge all the way over here somewhere so they just come in put it here built a bridge and then they fill this up and cut this off that makes sense then of course they, they diverted this this there again is construction and cost and so on now one of the best places I know and a lot of the boys are going down to uh, to uh, southern Indiana uh, Lake going down to Lake Monroe on a networking event pretty quick and uh, some of the campground is right here in different places I don't know who exactly where you're going to stay but you'll get on the lake and you're going to see a situation like this the Boy, Boy Scout camp is sitting right in here somewhere there is a launch up in here but here's the main channel they went down here and they cut it off right there they came here and dug another channel over here to feed the water down here and then handle it this way you as you drive across here you can't see that rascal but when you're when you're trolling this riprap or trolling the riprap here then you you'll be able to run across this thing when I fished this thing Terry and I fished it one time and he, he and I caught about 75 bass with a 500 right there and that was where I was running the short line on him and 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 he he, he didn't know what I was doing <laughs> now the hot spot though was from here to here especially at this this is the hot spot and the hot spot in the lake is usually can limp it out limit out good fish right here so you got to look at anticipate this particular structure this fishing situation such as this you saw the fishing situations the structure situations and that's where I mentioned fishing situations you gotta work them truck the situation or fishing situation the rest as far as I'm concerned is trolling situation as an afterthought the, the be sure that we all understand what we're talking about here's a situation a low water stage a beautiful bar and ridge coming out here drops off and got bushes here and I got here and it looked like to me but the way it is over here is pretty well and you see it's just pretty it's a nice bar ridge like bar comes down here and it comes around on the other side comes up here and there's your bar now my question is this at high water do you think this bar would produce Uh, only one thought I have to leave with you if you do not accept the fact that the home of the fish is deep water then you might as well quit right then you know you, it's the end of the whole ball of wax you just don't have to go through all this other thing because if you if you don't accept this 
and you, you wishy-washy about this, then I wouldn't, I wouldn't spend any time on all the study that we just talked about because you'll never become a great fisherman. You'll never become a great a spoon plugger unless you definitely accept this. As far as I'm concerned, if you don't accept this, this is the end of your fishing career right there.